Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and our second episode of Transit Explained. Leaving Hong Kong, we're headed to Paris to check out one of my favorite tram networks in the world, the Ile de France Tramways. This system is incredibly interesting for its varied design, urban integration, varied rolling stock, and long lengths, so let's get into it. A special thanks to Julian R and Louis B for helping with this video and providing some photos and videos. As it turns out, while people lament the loss of streetcar systems in North America due to the auto industry, Paris seems to have lost out in a bigger way. In the early 1900s, its tram network extended over 1,000 kilometers. However, the system was progressively closed before the 1940s rolled around. Remnants are unearthed sometimes, just like in Toronto. To some extent, the short stop spacing of the Paris metro likely also contributed. As it turns out though, the concept of a tram in a dedicated lane became an attractive idea again in the 1970s due to growing congestion and the oil crisis. Of course, trams were also quieter than a bus, higher capacity, they didn't pollute, and they provided for better accessibility. Best of all, the mode was well suited to Paris with its often wide boulevards and dense cityscape, which made low speeds acceptable. In 1992, the first of a modern series of tramways opened in Paris with Line T1, north of the city centre. This line opened in two phases in 1992, with the section from Bobigny to La Courneuve opening in July, and the section from La Courneuve to Gare de Saint-Denis in December of the same year, with connections to the metro at Basilique de Saint-Denis, and with the RER at Gare de Saint-Denis, as well as Bobigny, Pablo Picasso, and La Courneuve, May 8, 1945. There were also projects which implemented early BRT with similar characteristics to T1 around the same time. In 1997, the first section of the new T2 tramway opened west of the city centre between Paris's new business district at La Défense and Issy Val de Seine. This section opened in July and was constructed from a converted railway. The line provides connections to the metro and RER at La Défense and a connection to the RER at Issy Val de Seine. In December of 2003, T1 was extended from Bobigny to noisy le sec providing a new connection to the RER. In 2006, a new line known as T4 opened northeast of the city centre, though uniquely, this was a tram train. If you're wondering what happened to T3, it was constructed concurrently and opened slightly later. Line T4 travels between Bondy RER station and Aulnay sous bois RER station. Some of these names might sound familiar if you've seen my previous video on the Grand Paris Express, Paris's new regional scale automated metro lines. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend you do so, and I'll link it in the top right corner. Quite uniquely as a tram train, the line is operated by SNCF, France's national rail operator, rather than the RATP, the operator of the Paris Metro, and it uses 25 kV AC overhead power. In 2006, a new line finally in Paris proper began encircling the city centre known as T3. As it turns out, since T3 was to be quite long and dense with stops, it actually consists of two separate lines known as T3A, south of the centre, and T3B to the north. The first section of T3A opened in December from Pont du Garigliano, RER station, to Port de Vrie, though at the time it was simply known as T3. Notably, much of the line follows Paris's mostly disused little ring line. The line provided transfer to the metro at Ballard, Port de Versailles, Parc de Exposition, Port de Vanves, Port d'Orléans, Port de Terry, Port de Choisy, and Port de Vrie, and transfers to the RER at Pont du Garigliano, Hôpital European, Georges Pompidou, and Cité Universitaire. That's a lot of transfers. In November of 2009, Tramway 2 was extended from Issy Val de Seine to Port de Versailles. This allowed for transfer to the metro and the tram at Port de Versailles and to the metro at Ballard and to the tram at Port de C. This was the first time two of the new tramways were connected. Three years later in November, both T1 and T2 were extended. T1 was extended to Les Corti with an extension which added a metro connection at the new terminus as well as an RER connection at Gare de Jeanvilliers. Concurrently, T2 is extended to Pont de Baison. The line is a total of 18 kilometers long with 24 stops and it's operated by RATP. 
One month later, T3 finally became T3A and T3B, with T3A being extended to Port de Vincent, which would become the location of the line split, with two stations across the street from one another, with T3B being opened from this new stop at Port de Vincent to Port de la Chapelle, now taking the circular tram to the north of the center. With these extensions, new connections opened at the new combined terminus of Port de Vincent, with the metro on T3A and T3B, as well as Port de Montreal, Port de Bagnolet, Port de Lilas, Port de la Villette with the metro, and Rosa Parks and Port de la Chapelle on the RER. In July of 2013, a new tram, T5, was introduced, operating between Marche de Saint-Denis metro station and tram stop, and Garges Sarchelle RER station north of the capital, as well as a connection to the metro at Guinimer. This line uses a unique type of tram I'll discuss more later on in this video. With 16 stops over 7 kilometers of track, T5 has among the highest stop density of any tram line in Paris. The line is operated by RATP. Later that year in November, another new tram line, this one T7, opened using more traditional trams. This line extends from Villejuif, Louis Aragon, Metro Station, and Affissement south of the city center. Connection to the RER is also provided at La Fraternelle, and the tram uniquely provides direct access to Orly Airport. T7 featured 18 stops on 11 kilometers of track, and is sitting as likely the least used tram line in Paris, with ridership lower than some of the middle of the road bus routes in Toronto, for example. At the end of the next year in December 2014, another new line, known as T6, was inaugurated southwest of the city center, utilizing the same unique tram technology as Line 5. This line connects Châtillon, Montrouge metro station with Roger Wagner stop. In addition, another new tramway known as T8 opened north of the city centre. This line connected Saint-Denis, Port de Paris metro station with Viltanus Université and Epinay Orgement via two branches. The line also provided connection to the RER and tram at Gare de Saint-Denis and with the RER at Epinay sur Seine. T8 has 17 stops and is 8 kilometers long. It's operated by RATP. In May 2016, T6 was extended to Viroflay Rive Droit with connections to Viroflay Rive Gauche RER station. This extension features quite an impressive tunnel that actually utilizes metro equipment for things like signaling. In all, Line 6 extends 14 kilometers and features 21 stops and is operated by RATP. In 2017, the next tram line opened, this time skipping all the way ahead to T11, and appended with Express, because it's a tram train. And yeah, we won't talk about T4. To be fair, T11 is long and has a very low stop density compared to other tram lines, so the Express moniker does make some sense. The line connects from epinay sur seine stop on T8, and the RER at Le Bourget RER station north of the city, with connections to tram also provided at Villa Tenus Université and to the RER at Pierrefet Stins. The line extends 11 kilometers northeast of the city center and features seven stops and is operated by a subsidiary of Keolis. In November 2018, T3B was extended to Port d'Anier, roughly 80% of the way around the city center. Of course, it also provided new connections to the metro at Port de Clignancourt, Port de Saint-Douin, and both metro and RER at Port de Clichy. In all, T3 is 27 kilometers in length and features 50 stops. It's operated by RATP. T3 is the most used line in the Paris tramway network, with over 100 million yearly riders, not much less than the yearly ridership of the entire Dubai metro system. T3A in particular is at capacity, and there is unlikely to be any changes on the line itself which could help alleviate that. Less than a year later, a one-stop extension of T1 was opened to Anier Cacheru. This brought the line to 18 kilometers in length with 37 stations. The service is operated by RATP and trams run at 750 volts DC electrification. In 2019, T4 had a second branch added east from Gorgon to Arboretum, operating on 750 volts DC power finally making use of the long dormant capabilities in the original trams. This extension was further extended to Hôpital de Montfermeil in October 2020. The line features 20 stops over 13 kilometers of track. Finally, just this year in 2021, the latest tramway in the system opened, T9 south of the city, adjacent to T7. The line travels from Port de Choisy on T3 and the metro to Orly Gaston Vien, RER station. Connections are also provided to the RER at Les Sons and Rouget de Lille stops. 
The line is 10 kilometers long and features 19 stops. Its trams operate at 750 volts DC and it is operated by Keolis. The Paris Tramway network consists of 10 distinctive lines with 211 stops, 100 plus kilometers of track, and nearly a million daily riders, more than many entire metro systems. While it is far from the largest or most extensive in the world, it's incredibly large for its age and incredibly dense, with stops every 500 meters or so on average. Of course, if you couldn't tell from the massive investments going into the metro and RER, Paris has worked incredibly hard to expand its public transit network in recent years, and that includes extended tramways, of course. T1 is planned to be extended west, roughly 5 kilometers, with 10 new stops, including an interchange with T2 where the lines are interlined. T1 is also planned to be extended east by roughly 8 kilometers, with 15 new stops, terminating at Val de Fontenay RER station. T1 would likely be divided into two separate lines at this point, akin to T3 for operational reasons, at Bobigny. There are also discussions about even further extensions west for T1, but they are at the very early stages. T3 is set to be extended southwest to Port Dauphin metro station. This under construction extension will be 8 stops and roughly 5 kilometers long and would go a long way to closing the T3 loop. Unfortunately though, between local nimbyism and uncertainty about the need for the extension to close the loop, this seems unlikely to happen anytime soon. It's also been suggested that T3 could be extended from Port de Vincent to Place de la Nation just up the street, given the two sections simply terminate at Port de Vincent and this actually seems like a fairly sensible idea. T4 is set to be slightly reconfigured. The line currently runs on a single track between Arboretum and the terminus at L'Hôpital de Montfermeil. Plans called for this section to be converted into a single direction loop with another one-way station built to the north. T7 has a planned 4km extension to juvisy sur orge RER station, which will feature 6 stops. Unfortunately, this plan also seems to be on hold for the moment. T8 has a substantial planned extension to Rosa Parks, which would consist of 9 new stops on roughly 4 kilometers of track. With several metro and tram connections along the way, the line would be quite useful, and this extension seems seriously likely to be built. Further extensions south and extensions of the branches are also discussed, but unlikely to be built anytime soon. T9 has been built for extensions in both directions in the future, but for the time being, that seems unlikely unless there's a major change. T11 is planned to be extended both east and west, with four stations to the west and three stations to the east. These extensions are set to open in 2024 and 2027 respectively, and would bring a number of new metro, RER, and tram connections. As you may have expected, new lines are also being built. Tram Line 10 is already under construction southwest of the city. The line will feature 14 stops over 8 kilometers and will connect the RER at La Croix de Bernay and with Tram Line 6 at Hôpital Beauclair. The line will likely look a lot like T9 as they're being built with similar design philosophies. In addition to Line 10, Paris is also getting Line T12 and Line T13. I mean T12 Express and T13 Express that is. T12 Express is a 20 km long tram train line with 16 stops under construction southwest of Paris, while T13 is another tram train line to the west of the city, planned to be roughly 19 km with 11 stops. Both lines are set to terminate at RER lines, with T12 also featuring a transfer to the RER at epinay sur orge Much like T10 will take substantial inspiration from T9, you can expect lines T12 and T13 to share many features with T11. Both lines will be operated by SNCF, as with T4, but unlike T11. Discussions have already begun around a potential extension of line T12 northwest to Versailles, but given how far away the line is from opening its first phase, nothing is set in stone. Perhaps my favorite thing about the tramways of Paris is the rolling stock. Paris's rolling stock is almost 100% low floor and extremely varied, both in design and dimensions. These differences in width, in particular, are something we'll come back to. The designs themselves are very good, with a mix of colors and design elements, including of the digital variety. The use of line roundels on LED headboards is one of my favorite features. Of course, since this is France, most of the rolling stock is from Alstom. I sometimes like to think of the Paris tramways like a real-life catalog of Alstom tram models, which I do think are probably the best from any major manufacturer. The first model to discuss is the TFS tram from Alstom used on Tramline 1 and formerly on Tramline 2. This model, whose name roughly translates to standard French tram, is used in several French cities and is roughly 70% low floor, which tends to be my preference, much like a Siemens S70. The tram is 2.3 meters wide and 30 meters long and has three segments with four sets of double doors per side. 
The next stock to look at is the Citadis 302 from Alstom used on Paris T2. These trams are 100% low floor and only slightly wider than the TFS which they replaced on line 2. The trams are 32 meters long with 5 segments and 5 sets of double doors per side. Now, these trams are noted for their very odd face. This is due to a cover retrofitted to cover exposed couplers, something which are better integrated into new tram models. These covers were applied to help reduce the danger of the coupler causing injury in a collision. As it turns out, T2 is the only line that regularly operates coupled trams as well, making those prominent couplers a bit more sensible. A very similar but modernized version of the Citadis 302 is used on T7 and T8. Of course, the newer vehicles ditch the ugly coupler covers. Next up is the Citadis 402, which is used on both T3A and T3B, and only these lines. This model is 2.65 meters wide and 44 meters long. The trams have 7 segments and a total of 7 sets of double doors per side. These are the longest trams which operate in Paris, and I'm personally a big fan of the angular front face on these. For standard city trams, I've left the best for last, with the Citadis 405, which is used on T9, that just opened this year. As it turns out, a variant of this model is used on Sydney's new light rail. The design of this tram is really marvelous, from the colors to the gentle curves to the interior, but at night, the model looks even more incredible with a sweeping band of LEDs across the vehicles that illuminates it and actually communicates which doors are open, closed, or inactive. The specifications are similar to the 402 model, except for featuring an extra set of double doors by doubling up the doors at the ends of the vehicles, which are typically singular. The trams are 2.65 meters wide and 45 meters long. Next, we have the tram train rolling stock. The first model is the Citadis Dualis, which is used on lines 4 and 11. These trains feature 4 segments and 4 sets of double doors and are 2.65 meters wide and 42 meters long. The trains are quite similar to the rolling stock used on the Ottawa O train, albeit Ottawa has far more doors on its trains. It's also worth noting that since some of these trains encounter 750 volt DC power on T4, they're dual power capable with 25 kV AC capabilities as well, something which is quite unique for a tram. The next vehicle up is the Siemens Avanto tram train used on line 4. These vehicles are not only the only Siemens rolling stock on the tram network, but they're the only rolling stock from a non-French company. Of course, they also stick out because they're painted with the Transilien livery, which I'm not a fan of. Much like the Duelis, these vehicles are dual power capable. While the Avantos have proved themselves reliable in other locations in France, they've had substantial reliability issues on T4, which should only remind us that every manufacturer has its struggles. Now, you may be asking, what about lines 5 and 6 and their supposedly unique rolling stock? Lines 5 and 6 are oddballs because they use Translore rolling stock. Now you ask, what is Translore? Translore is a line of so-called rubber tire trams. To be clear, these are not trolley buses. They have pantographs and look like trams. Unlike proper trams though, they run on rubber tires and have a single rail. So how do they work? Translore trams, as I'll call them, run on rubber tires much like a bus, powered by an overhead line and guided by a single rail, which steel wheels contact and roll along, allowing for a second point of contact as a return for power. As it turns out, rubber tired trams have a lot in common with rubber tired metro trains. A lot of claims are made about the capabilities of the trams by their manufacturer, but most are disputed, and the technology brings a lot of problems to the table. The ride quality isn't great, derailment is a much bigger risk, and the technology is proprietary and cannot easily interline, and the infrastructure required is bespoke and sometimes inconvenient to engineer around. Translore systems are not very widespread, and Paris unfortunately bit the bullet of using them for two separate lines, a choice that will likely be lamented in the future. Now that we have the unfortunate Translore lines out of the way, what does the Parisian tram system have to offer? The first thing that stands out to me is the urban integration of the system. From the style of the right-of-way, to the stops, to the pavers used, the lines blend beautifully with the surroundings, including even the operations and maintenance facilities. Of course, Paris also has substantial green track, which further enhances the landscape and is very cool. Toronto's Eglinton tram line is set to do something similar. Something else you'll quickly notice about the Paris tram network is the incredible density. Lines and extensions of only a few kilometers, which would be very bland and minimal in North American cities, can feature numerous stops and interesting design elements, really adding to the sophistication of the network. This is all helped by the top stop spacings of the lines, and the relatively low cost with which they're built. Of course, as mentioned earlier, the network is quite unique in that it's not connected, and that many lines are totally islanded. This is double unique for a tram network in Europe, but when you look a little deeper it makes sense. 
Since the network is quite young, it wasn't adapted or born from something existing. Because of this, lines sprung up wherever priorities were, and given the different rolling stock types and standards used, connecting lines isn't seen as practical even when lines come right next to each other. All of this means that unlike some tram networks which are quite complex in their services and operations, Paris operates its tram network much like a simple metro network with one service per line, sort of like the difference between the New York City subway and the London Underground. Something else that I found very interesting traveling around the Parisian tram network were the number of grade separations. Of course, the trams spend a lot of time on the street, but it's surprisingly common to see trams take a bridge or underpass to bypass a major point of congestion, something which we could learn a lot from in my home city of Toronto. Something which is also very noticeable is the pleasant and varied design of stops, compared to many contemporary light rail stops in North America. This comes down to incredibly small details like pavement details, glass design, benches, and other pedestrian features. The last thing worth mentioning about the Paris tram network, and this is something which draws in a number of unique features, is the way it forms the finest fabric of rail transport in Paris, between trips. The trams provide a fabric that is even denser than the metro and RER, truly showing how a transit system can be designed with layers formulated by various transit modes, each serving trips of different distances. The tight shop spacing and incredible urban integration of the tram network in Paris and the fact that trams show up every few minutes means even for incredibly short trips, the trams can provide a pleasant and aesthetically pleasing travel option. So that's it, my favorite tram network in the world. Paris has mastered intermodal connectivity and more than any other city builds every mode. There is not a metro obsession or tram obsession or an RER obsession. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.